Shalom and welcome to Counting the Cost, a linguistic analysis of Hebrew numbers. Today we will do the number three, which is associated with the idea of measurement. The word for three in Hebrew is shalosh, is Strong's number 7969, and it means a literal three. Genesis 5.22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Genesis 6.10, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yafet. There's also a verb root which de derives from shalosh, from three, uh, shin, lamet, shin, and it means to measure by three. In Genesis 15, 9, and he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. You can see by the fact that the letters are in italics, years old, that those words don't actually appear in the Hebrew text. There's just this idea of measure by three. Deuteronomy 19.3 Thou shalt prepare thee a way, and divide the coast of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth to thee to inherit, into three parts, that every slayer may flee thither. Talking about the cities of refuge, there is only one word in the Hebrew which means to divide into three parts, and that is from the root shalosh three. So it has this idea also of dividing, the idea of measuring. 1 Kings 18.34 And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. Again, measuring by threes. Another verse we know well, Ecclesiastes 4.12 And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The idea of three things being woven together. Another word which comes from this root of three is shilshom, and this means literally the day before yesterday, the idea of three days ago. We're also going to see it in combination where it means anything in times past. But if you think about three days ago um, being the day before yesterday, that means you have to count today, yesterday, and the day before yesterday. So that gives um, a lot of meaning to things that happen on the third day or in the third day. You can uh, tease that out for yourself. Uh, in 1 Samuel 21, 6, it's 21, 5 in the King James. And David answered the priest and said to him, Of all truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out and the vessels of the young men are holy and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. David is about to receive the bread of the priest because his young men are hungry. The idea of times past is an idiom with the word uh, either tmol, taf mem vav lamed, or etmol, which is the modern Hebrew word for uh, yesterday. The idea of tmol or etmol comes from a preposition mul, which means uh, facing or across from. The Hebrew idea of time is the opposite of how we think of time. In other words, things that happened um, before and in the past, Hebrew people see as being in front of them. And things that are in the future, Hebrew people see as being behind them. Where we review, we just see it the opposite. We see things that are behind us as being past. But they think that things which are behind them are the future because we can't see them. Things that are in the past, we can see them, therefore they're in front of us. So this is the idea of etmol, something that's ahead of us or facing us. Um, so the uh, idiom is either shilsham tmol or shilsham etmol. Three days ago and yesterday, or yesterday and three days ago. Genesis 31.2, And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. 
1 Samuel 4, 7. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there hath not been such a thing heretofore in times past. In Exodus 5.14, I want to show you the Young's translation because the King James translation actually reverses the two concepts. In the Young's translation, we see, And the authorities of the sons of Israel, whom the exactors of Pharaoh have placed over them, are beaten, saying, Wherefore have ye not completed your portion in making brick, as heretofore, both yesterday and today? If you can read in the Hebrew, you see the first phrase, Ketmol Shilshom, which is the idiom for times past, yesterday, and three days ago. And then you see the second phrase, both yesterday and today, Gam Tmol, also yesterday, Gam Hayom, today. So the heretofore is really before the yesterday and today. In the King James, it reads opposite. In verse 14, and the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick, both yesterday and today, as heretofore? So the phrases in the King James are reversed. Another word from this root is shalish, which literally means a measure, but also we're going to see some things uh, that relate to three or a triangle. Psalm 80, verse 6, which is verse 5 in the King James, Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, thou givest them tears to drink in great measure. This is the word shalish. Isaiah 40, 12, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Talking about Yahweh, who has created the whole universe and holds all of it in the palm of his hand. There are other words for measuring in Hebrew, and those words appear in this verse, but the idea of the measure is that shalish. In Proverbs 22:20, 20, have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? So this is a measure a superior measure of something wonderful. It's an excellent. First Samuel 18, 6. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. Shalish is translated there as instruments of music, uh, maybe they're three stringed instruments, or maybe the very body of the instrument is like a triangle. Also related to the idea of measurement, uh, there is an upper level officer within the army or within the tribe. Because of his measure of being above his fellows, he is a captain, and that is also the word shalish. Exodus 14.7 And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots and captains over every one of them. In 2 Kings 7.19 And that Lord answered the man of God. In other words, this was a person of some level, of some measure or stature within the community. And said, Now behold, if Yahweh should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And the man who was standing at the gate who doubted the prophecy of the uh, prophet of God. One thing that is special and unique about this root is that it shows us the picture of the seven branch candelabra. There are three stems on each shin and then the lamed in the center. The uh, Shabbat is the crown the jewel in the calendar of our week. So Hebrew people think of three days leading up to Shabbat, Shabbat, and three days leading away. And again, the cycle starts again. It's a measure of our time 
in this world, our time and our time with Yahweh on a special set apart day. What significance can the believer take away from this idea of three and this idea of measuring? Matthew 7 2 For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. An idea, one of the foundational principles in this world as we live, is measure for measure. Um, in Luke, it talks about the good measure pressed down together shaken together and running over. We need to be generous in this world and Yahweh will be generous to us. 2 Corinthians 10.13 But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. Yahweh has measured certain gifts out to each person and that uh, by that we need to measure ourselves. Ephesians 4 7 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Messiah and in verse 13 till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Messiah we need to measure ourselves against him against Yeshua uh, he is the measure of absolutely all things in this world. Hebrews 10.2 For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. He is the man of the utmost measure, he is the man of the highest measure, our Messiah. He is the captain. Revelation 19.16 and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Melacham Lachim Adon Adonim. He is the highest measure, and it is next to him and by him that we measure ourselves. I'm sure there are many other ideas that you can think about when you as you meditate on this ideas of measurement and of excellent things. In the meantime, to Simitai Nayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.